Hey, Pamela's, welcome back. This episode, we are talking to Marilyn Gigliotti. You will know her from her character in the movie Clerks as Veronica in 1994, as well as Clerks 3 in 2022. That just came out this past September. Uh, it was September 13th, right, Marilyn? I think so, yeah. Why did yeah. it was September? That that I definitely remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a huge day, too. A lot of uh, Clerks fans, uh, Kevin Smith fans, all looked out looking for Clerks 3 to come out. So uh, right now it's available on Blu-ray and digital download. So those of you listeners, you panelers out there, you could easily just go to, uh, you know, your Apple TV and download it on iTunes and just watch it as is or uh, even Vudu and on demand as well as what Kevin would say. And so go get that. So, yes. yeah, as you guys know, we've had Kevin on before and he loves to promote his stuff and as well as I do. So with that, we're going to move right along and go right into how we're going to talk about the original Clerks movie. So, uh Marilyn, since you were Veronica, which was a very key character within the actual movie itself, mm-hmm. it is trying to point Dante in the right steps. Is there any favorite memories within filming of that original movie in oh 1994? So many, really. I mean, the fact that it was fond and not so fond because, you know, we're here we are going there at 11 o'clock at night, I think it was, you know, till six o'clock in the morning. Um, mm-hmm. Not as bad for me as it was for the guys, because it was only maybe three nights for me where it was like every night for them. Um, <laughs> but uh, just being there with the guys and, and having my first experience uh, working on a movie set. Um, so, you know, like all of it really. Um, and, just doing the auditioning process and and yeah from beginning to end really and still it's still (laughs) yeah the auditioning process was very interesting because the way kevin had done it literally was he did it in his local town with the local theater and i think that's how you got your way in there as well as brian and then he brought in jeff because he went to high school with him Mm -hmm. and he knew him like Ernie and the rest of the the cast, and uh, you you kind of filled the bill for Veronica. Do you, what do you think actually grasped his attention to make you that particular character? Was it your gumption, your attitude, or your? No, I mean no, and and I mean this is something that they've pretty much have put out there, um, because after. Uh, the auditions of the night that I went Mm -hmm. they supposedly went to a diner and Walt was freaked out um, because (laughs) because I had gotten so emotional for my audition scene that I did Um, and the funny thing is it's like and and I say this and and everybody's like hey you got the part it doesn't matter it's like you know but as an actor critiquing her work Mm -hmm that was not my best performance and sure i i did get the the emotions kind of going and stuff because it is an emotional piece but it felt to me it felt forced yes great it got me the audition i mean it got me the role and all that kind of stuff but the actor critiquing her work knows it wasn't the best performance but 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 it was good enough that it got me the role so that's great um so so they were basically talking about that the whole night and kevin uh called me up and asked me to come down to the convenience store to talk to him pick up the script read the script make sure i was comfortable with what was going to be discussed in the in the scene or yeah. scenes um and uh I, I took it to work. I was reading it the next day at work and I was laughing and I was like, yeah, I'm so in. I, I was definitely in for this. <laughs> Did you think that this character would actually be a legacy for you in your life right at this point? <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> and, you know, with having a little bit more experience behind me, yeah. I, I don't go to into any character or any um 
set or or script or movie or whatever you want to call it thinking that okay, um, good. and you can't and you can't you really can't you you go in there hoping that you do the best possible job um hope that it's put together <laughs> well <laughs> that it, it's they come it come it becomes something that people are going to enjoy but you can never know how it's going to be received um so you only hope for the best yeah you basically you're tackling every character per character as they come to you and presenting the best work that you can yeah uh, yeah, that, that, that's the best way to approach it. Um, is there a way that you uh, approach certain characters, though, in comparison to others? Uh, like, a lot of people try to be that particular character throughout films. You know, you, you hear all these things. Or do you feel that you're trying to present the character as is, as it was written? Uh, um, One thing that I learned through the process of finding the process or your process. Yeah. Because everybody has a different process. Yeah. Everybody has a different process, but also um, you, you know, you go through training and you take what resonates and you throw away what doesn't. Okay. And you can only develop your, your, your process throughout all of that training and so for me, it's like what I had to kind of do was it's like, all right, if I was this character, who would I be as this, this character? And whenever I read a character or a script, mm -hmm. I may find pieces in there that bring up memories for me of my own life, whether it's exact or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to fit every little piece of the puzzle for, for whatever it is that brings up that memory for me. But I use that as that memory towards the character or towards the scene or the emotions. Okay. Um, but, but if I were say playing an attorney, well, if I actually decided to become an attorney, how would I be playing that? How would uh -huh. I, how would I, be as an attorney in real life. Okay. So that's that's kind of like what I do. I like that's that. That's a great approach. It's a, a lot of people like to put themselves as like characters and be that character. That's the reason why I asked because uh, I actually interviewed Patricia Tolman years ago. And she had said to me, because when she was doing acting either on Star Trek or anything like that, she tried to get into the mindset at times as specific characters but even though it's like sci-fi and all that yeah. uh she would approach it as just like you were saying uh, a lot of people are character actors that are out there that will just try to be the character you know mm. uh it's kind of i'm forgetting what they call it in uh, in acting school i'm not an actor by any <laughs> means whatsoever uh -huh. but they kind of embody the the character and they live in that character andrew lincoln did it, did it on the walking dead uh i think joaquin phoenix and a whole bunch of other people but it, it's kind oh, yeah, of they call it uh, method acting method acting there you yeah. go yeah and you know like because it's like sometimes there are certain attributes to to a character say they grew up in in the streets of New York, you know, homeless or whatever. And that kind of brings a certain physicality to the character. Yeah. So I have to think about it. It's like, well, okay, what if I grew up in that scenario? Um, what do I take away from other people that I've seen in the, in these scenarios? So in one sense, you kind of have to do that little sense mm -hmm. uh, of, of characterization, but in another way you all you also have to kind of bring yourself into that that character and and um think about what that would be like hmm. yeah um, it, it's putting you in that per particular instance and and reacting yeah and, and, and then get you know obviously giving out the uh 
the dialogue as it was given to you on script. And, and some people are very much like that, like with directors or writers where they, you have to spit out the dialogue specifically and yeah. how, how it's supposed to be. Yeah. And sometimes that that's pretty hard too, from what I understand from certain actors as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm kind of move moving kind of fast, but you know, with, with this whole clerks thing, it was in 1994 it came out such mm-hmm. a huge success. Now we're 28 years later and here we are. And clerks three comes out when you got that script or when you got that message from Kevin, Hey, I want you to come back and play in the pool again for clerks three. How did you feel? Well, the thing is with, with that, because, um, it because there was the original Clerks Three script, yes. and then there was this Clerks Three script that was made. <laughs> yep. um, and I'm um, trying to think of when the original one. I think it was seven years ago. Was it that? Oh my god! Yes, it was. It was. I recall because I remember hearing a podcast with Kevin and Jeff, <laughs> and they were talking about it, and uh, things didn't happen. I always wondered for years what had happened. And yeah. uh, they discussed it thoroughly, not the entire story, but I, from what I remember, <laughs> it was completely yeah, and it's, different. It's hard, it's hard to think that it was seven years ago already. Yes. <laughs> um, because and I, I don't even remember how it came about, but I know that Brian had mentioned to me that I was in that script. However, <laughs> um. When we went to go and do the Clerks 3 reading, staged reading, um, that was a fundraiser for the First Avenue Playhouse where Kevin yes. held the auditions originally. And um, I flew myself out there because I, I didn't – there's so many things that happen on the East Coast that I miss um, because I can't afford to fly myself out there and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, crazy ridiculous but, you know sometimes it's like it, it'll work out where it's like all right you know i let me put myself in further debt and i'll fly myself out there because <laughs> i i did not want to miss the stage three the 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 yeah this the stage reading for clerks three um and and can miss out on being a part of that and going back to where it all started and um so when the script the scripts were distributed and I'm kind of like, oh, okay. It's like, um, Ernie, where's Veronica in here? He's like, I don't know. I was like, I was told Veronica was in, in, in this. It's like, and, um, Brian was just like, you know, he was, he was a little shocked as well. Um, but I, I don't know what draft kept, uh, Brian had, but the draft that was, finally you know put to 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 rest was uh probably about four drafts afterwards and and eventually veronica was written out of the script um so even more so i was very happy that i put myself out there and put myself a little bit more into debt to go out there so that i was there to be able to do the reading and and show oh you know well this is what we can do this is the fun we've had and it's like you know getting all these people together and and putting myself in front of kevin to to you know to show it's like yes let's do this again um and and thankfully some people in the audience (laughs) um had asked the question well if you happen if you do happen to do the clerks three will veronica be in there and um and kevin did say yes although as as excited as i can be about that um i am certainly uh a realist when it comes to the many things that are said in hollywood don't necessarily always happen in hollywood yeah yeah <laughs> um so you know it's so it was pretty pretty nice that eventually I I was finally cast in in that and and the thing was uh 2019 uh LA Comic Con the last one before all the lockdown and the pandemic mm-hmm. um Kevin was doing the promotional work for Jane Silent Bob reboot yes 
And we were all in uh, LA Comic Con with Legion M. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were at their booth. Uh, the facade for Clerks uh, was back there. And and the 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 drug den or whatever you want to call it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> it was basically the one shot of the whole clerk's cast at that point for yeah. Silent Bob reboot and Jane, Jane yeah. Silent Bob reboot. Yeah. And we were and and at one point it's like they're doing, you know, there were all these people who dressed up as Jay and Silent Bob. And so they were doing promotional work with that. And then finally at a certain point, Kevin's like, hey, Brian, Marilyn, come on over. Jason was there and, mm -hmm. and Kevin and and Kevin's like lined us up and and he's like, hold up three fingers. So I'm like holding up three fingers. And I'm thinking, wondering, why are we <laughs> holding up three fingers? And at a certain point, it just kind of dawned on me. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. And I turned to him and I said, does this mean that I'm in, in three? And Kevin does his little face of like, and, <laughs> and <laughs> I, yeah, I was pretty excited at that point. Um, I'm sure the whole convention hall heard uh, me how excited I was. Awesome. Awesome. That is great. Uh, it, it's funny too, because for the fact it's like, you, you say, oh, you tell me put up three for three fingers for clerks three. Wait, did I just sign a like a visual contract at this point <laughs> with Kevin Smith? Oh, yeah. is this his way of getting me in looped hole in this? But obviously, it's Kevin, and you you have history, and your your career pretty much was launched. Everybody knew your face from that particular movie, and obviously, you can't say no. <laughs> if I were that person, I, I wouldn't say no. You get to say no when I'm an actor. I want acting jobs. So, yes. uh, yeah. I, I was excited to be um, part of it again. But again, uh, <laughs> no in Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> um, until, until I was on set, uh, I was not getting myself too, too excited um and uh so until that point <laughs> and then then didn't you like this? <laughs> yeah, yeah i get you yeah all right uh with that too because it, if a lot of you listeners will know if you listen to our uh discussion when steve and i covered uh jane Silent bob reboot literally over a year ago uh we covered that and we discussed it Obviously, Reboot takes place in Chronicon, which is Kevin's own, you know, uh, little convention based upon Jay, Jay and Silent Bob or, uh, uh, what is it, something in Chronic, <laughs> I'm forgetting. But regardless, uh, it, it's its own Comic-Con. And the fact that you've been going to cons, you've been going out there engaging and embracing and getting in contact with a lot of the fans that are out there that are Clerks fans yeah. or View Askew Universe fans that are out there. You and I met back uh, in last March for the 25th anniversary of the Secret Stash in oh, Red Bank, New Jersey. Okay. okay. So uh, I don't know if you remember me, but it was a little bit of chaos, and I understand that, that you don't remember. Is it the remember. first night or the second night? First night. Okay. Yeah, so but... First, the first was it the first day or the second day that was all rain it was saturday and it was all rain yeah <laughs> well sorry for you guys it's all right it happens <laughs> but uh i remember you were like i have to sit down so you were there sitting on the uh but it, it was kind of overwhelming not for just us as fans loving and being there with all of you but you seemed a little bit overwhelmed like oh my god there's so many people here there were lines of people out the door. Now you're doing that on a regular basis with Brian and the rest of the cast. I, I think I, oh, I, I try to. I, I, yeah. I, you know, um, I, I tell, I tell uh, the the fans mm -hmm. because the fans are like, "Are you going to come here? Are you going to come there?" It's like, you know, I'd love to come here, there, and everywhere. Um, the people you have to ask is the promoters. You exactly. got to get the promoters to get us out there. If you don't see me there, the promoter didn't want me there. But kind of putting it out there a little bit. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody. 
call the venue say hey we want them there we get the promoter it's like mm-hmm. whether it be monster mania chilla theater or anything on the east coast a- anything anything, anything. <laughs> yeah. and, and uh pretty much uh zsc entertainment pretty much has a good 98 percent of the view askew people that do conventions oh huh. good to know so that that's a plug we can put in and we'll put those in the notes so that way you guys that are out there, little listeners, clerks, fans, mall rats, anything, viewers, universe, plug it and get Marilyn on there. Let's go. <laughs> uh, but with your interactions, though, at conventions, uh, is there any favorite fan experiences that you have? Because I'm sure this past year, it's been really cool because with the resurgence of everything with Clerks 3, uh, everybody going back, and you have newer fans that are watching Clerks yeah. from 1994. Yeah, I mean, you know, the whole experience, honestly, is really nice. Um, it was, I, I will say, though, that um, being at Columbus, Ohio, was exceptional because Rosario was there uh-huh. and Kevin was there, so Kevin was only there one day out of the out of the whole weekend. Um, so that day to have us all for a photo op and us having fun backstage in the photo <laughs> op area um, was pretty nice. <laughs> it cool. was pretty nice. Yeah, that that it's it's fun, and obviously, twenty eight years later, and you're seeing. All the people that you worked with, uh, all the older people that you worked with, you know, yeah. you're talking Brian. Brian, you've kept in contact. I, I saw that how close you, Jeff, and Brian were at the 25th anniversary of the uh, Secret Stash. Uh, we had a whole thing, which is now called Smod Cinemas, and it, it was called the Atlantic Highlands Movie Theater. And yeah. uh, I had a great time. Actually, it's funny, too, because it's all changed now. So you listeners that are out there and, you know, viewers for YouTube, literally, you could easily go to Red Bank, New Jersey or, oh, no, it's not Red Bank. No, it's it's the Highlands. The Atlantic Highlands, right? Or am I wrong? Yeah, Atlantic okay. Highlands. Atlantic Highlands. Uh, it's funny, too, uh, uh, being from Staten Island originally, never been there before. I was there and I was like, I had time before the whole uh, one-on-one with everything where Kevin introduced everything and we had panels, everything that was great. But they had you there, they had Jeff, they had Kevin, Jason, Trevor, uh, Kevin's wife. Yeah, yeah, there were quite a few of us there. Um, And I I liked the fact that he kind of grouped everybody in... And uh, had three separate rooms the first night and then two separate rooms the second night. And we were kind of able to um, have our own little sessions uh, um, with the fans, uh, which was really nice. Um, And the second night, like being that there was only two theaters, but still three groups Mm -hmm. so there'd be a group waiting in in one of the other theaters in between and so we just kind of be chatting amongst ourselves and feel you know talking about the whole experience and that night (laughs) was the first night that kevin had spoken to me because we were just kind of talking amongst ourselves about our experiences in in the theater Um, you know as we were um, coming up and, and all this and um, how some of the other actors that we had uh, worked on the stage with and that were in the original Clerks um, and we're wondering where they, they are at this point and stuff like that. But at that point is when Kevin said to me and mentioned how um, he, they had thought about deleting a scene from clerks three mm-hmm. and i I'm, I'm only assuming that it was probably the scene in the vehicle um i can't imagine that it was a scene inside the convenience store no i can't uh <laughs> but, but um but yeah. he had mentioned that it didn't it wasn't anything that moved the story along in any way um and so 
they thought about deleting it, but because I had truly delivered <laughs> on <laughs> on that scene that they couldn't. So I I was very taken aback by that. Oh wow. And 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 grateful to have had him tell me this. Um <laughs> So that 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 in itself was really really nice. Um, yeah. yeah, it sounded to me like you were part of the creative part of editing at that point too. If you think about it, because you yeah. said, "Do you want to?" <laughs> and, and then you see the car up and down. And... Now, yeah, and now what I'm to what I'm told, I haven't been able to see it yet. Um, I am told that on the DVD there are some extras in from that scene. Oh, really? Yes. All right, cool. That makes me want to go out and buy the Blu-ray now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got it on digital download. Actually, it was funny, too. Once it was put out there for September 13th, they kind of dropped it on iTunes. I couldn't mm -hmm. make it, honestly. I, I couldn't make it to the theaters. It wasn't anywhere local to me. I'm northwest, so I, I moved from... Uh, the five boroughs all the way up to uh the you know duchess county new york so mm -hmm. i i travel down for me to travel down it's like two hours almost to drive mm -hmm. but uh hey, you know what brian and i took a four hour drive to uh rhode island from where he lives in pennsylvania oh to, yeah <laughs> for the tour <laughs> so Two hours is nothing. Two hours is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but but the thing was is that uh a lot of stuff was sold out too, by the way. I, you had to jump on that. I'm I'm a working stiff. I you know, I love podcasting, I love doing this stuff, but it, it's a hobby, but trying to get the I time. Get it. Yeah. Remember I said I go and I got myself in debt, you know. <laughs> we all do, I think. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, you know, honestly, you know, seeing all those people 28 years later, uh, it must put a joy in your heart just to work with them again, obviously, to see Ernie and, you know, Walt and the rest of them. And then having Harley there as well, being, you know, Kevin's daughter, and then it being a family affair as well as old friends. And I think that is the best part when I what I took away from the actual movie. Uh, when I first watched it, I was like, what is this? So it took me a few more watches to appreciate and understand where Kevin was coming from as a fan. So I was equipped to actually doing a uh, a review of the particular movie. Uh -huh. So I haven't and I haven't had done one since. Uh, actually, you were the first person to come on to actually talk about this. The last time I spoke to Kevin was last uh, last year. Oh, but okay. but uh i you know i also keep getting invites especially for new year's eve we're recording this on uh, december 28th but i keep getting invites through the uh, you know if you go to oh, kevin's the, fan yeah. yeah his fan club i get all these things saying hey come down come down i'm like all right, well, uh, I got to figure out my what's going on that night. But, you know, I would I would have to actually go down there for the night, which is fun. But uh he seems to be more active within his uh world at this point when it comes to uh to the viewers universe with Smod Cinemas making events and I'm sure you'll probably be out there more often uh, if you're in the area. Obviously, I, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, 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 I certainly hope so. And being that we are entering year, well, let's see, we have another year and a half before we get we hit the thirty. I think. Yeah. Um. So, you know, who knows? I, I, I certainly hope that I am part of any kind of events that they decide to have down there. So. Mm -hmm. You but also, know. you have conventions that you're going to be at. You know, hopefully people invite you out there. Well, uh, as, of, as of right now, the only thing that I have kind of going on is uh, Pensacola, Florida um, in February. Let me okay. look the dates up. <laughs> um, that's, that's the only convention that I have 
as of this moment. But um, the good thing is that there's quite a few of us that are going to be there. Um, awesome. So those that's from uh, February 24th through the 26th. Pensacon. It's called. Cool. All right, cool. We'll put those. I'll put those show dates in the notes for people to listen to. Uh, you know, listeners, viewers, keep that in mind. Uh, well, let's talk about some of the stuff that you've done other than Clerks. So, uh, let's talk about Laid Over. It's a short film that came out in 2020. Um, I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, short film that a friend of mine, uh, put together. Um. Funny thing is, it's like this was a story, totally true story of hers that she was telling the director who's a who was a friend. And he's like, wait, 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 what? I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I have to record this. And so then he had somebody actually put it to script and decided to um make that his directorial debut. And um, so we went in, out to Arizona and uh, shot this at a real airport. Wow. Uh, yeah. Um, we had the airport to ourselves the whole night. Hmm. Um, and uh, I just played a small little part in that. Um, but this was basically kind of, you know, a showcase for the, the lead actor and the director. And uh, I, it got into a few festivals, and I think it won a few awards as well. So that was nice. Awesome. Cool. And uh, let's talk about A Mother's Love, a short film uh, that you directed. I did. It's my first uh, film that I directed. Um, this is part of a group of filmmakers uh, that we got together, I think it was back in... 2016, 2017, and we attempted to do a series of eight or nine short films wow. that were all connected in a way by a letter, like not a alphabet letter, but a written letter. Okay, cool. Um, and we did an Indiegogo weren't quite successful with it but with the amount of money that we did raise we I was going to say we were able to shoot three shorts but in hindsight we probably should have stuck to maybe two because then it took a while after shooting those three it took a little while to actually get those three then completed because we had no money for post yeah uh, <laughs> but uh because it wasn't until then this year that I personally and two of the lead actors that were part of the film group, um, we put together the money and, and were able to kind of get, or and also we uh, an editor that we know who did this out of the kindness of his heart and to be part of it, uh, to get it finished. And once we actually finished the short, um, and it was written by one of the actresses in the film as well. Uh, she kind of wrote this for her to kind of showcase her acting. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we basically, in the group, we we read everybody's scripts that everybody had inside, get ideas. And, and I immediately saw this one. Like, as we were reading it, I, like I saw it. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to direct this one. Awesome. Um, but, uh, it's basically about a young mother who lost her mother at a young age and gets a letter or has a letter for pretty much every moment in her life that her mother had thought of. Um, and now she's a young mother herself and is trying to find the message within her letters that she's received throughout the years to help her through her moment. And hmm. it's a surprise. It's more of a heart heartwarming moment or film or show. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, a lot of people like diversity, you know, not just comedy, not just horror, not thrillers, suspense. Mm -hmm. 
you, you're diversifying yourself, especially with being, you know, directing this too. So that that's something to put on your credits that, that you have on your credits. Yeah. Everybody, you, all you have to do is look at her IMDb, her Wikipedia, everything is there and yeah. it shows there. So it, it gets, you know, it shoehorns you into the industry to be a, right, a competitor. So, right yeah, it's like we have to show that we're busy and that we're doing something, If even if something is not happening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, so, you know, once Kevin announced that he was having his own film festival, that was kind of the impetus to like, all right, we really need to finish this uh, <laughs> and get this entered into his film festival. Um, so it, it was quite nice to get the news that that uh, a mother's love was accepted. You know, at a certain point, though, <laughs> I do question is like, wait a minute. I want to know that I actually got in on the merit of the film and not because of the connection that, that Kevin and I have. And I just happened to be at this small little convention in San Diego and Ming just happened to be there. And uh, we were doing a little panel and uh, I mentioned this and he's like, oh, no, no, no. You definitely got in because of the film. It's like, <laughs> um, because so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so also entered films and they, they, they didn't get in. It's like, okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not nepotism for the clerks <laughs> thing, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, she got in on her own merit, which is amazing. So it shows that she is skilled as a director. She is skilled as you know, I, I, you know, I look, look, I say this to people and, um, and they're like, you know, Marilyn, don't discount like what I'm a realist and mm. I am real with myself. I don't think this movie, uh, the the short, is going to win any awards in any way whatsoever. But it will definitely tug at your heart if you have one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, it shows that you're proud of what you're doing, and shows that you love what you're doing, and you put yourself out there on something that was different than you normally do, which is acting. Exactly, and and, and the thing is too, it's like you know, we did three shorts in three days. Mine had a location day in the middle of the day. So we were really stretching the moments of that, of that day to, <laughs> to be able to get everything in there. And, and I do look at the film and I see certain things and I'm like, oh man, I wish I could have done this, wish I'd done that. And wish I wish I had time to say, it's like, let's do another take. But, you know, uh, again, we were kind of pressed for time in the day. So we had to get it done. And, and we were shooting at, at two different apartments, Her, the writer's apartment the writer actor's apartment and then my apartment and needless to say not everybody cooperates with noise but that's, no, they well, don't. <laughs> that's not involved in in what you're doing in your apartment so yeah yeah, yeah i know that feeling it's okay uh, <laughs> all right well uh that was great and i love talking to you um so Obviously, you're out there in the convention circuit when you're available and people call you in. Uh, but you do also have your own website for merchandise. I do. And for anybody to book you, that would be marilyn-gigliotti.square.site. Yes. Um, so, yeah, uh, I thought it was kind of being that, you know, if I don't get to go to, to a convention, well, let me offer something outside of there and to you know so i i i've been thinking about i maybe i need a, another a different uh, site though than square because square has changed their mm. their um what do you call it their site in some ways that it's it's making it a little bit more difficult to kind of maneuver mm -hmm. the back dashboard and all that kind of stuff so i don't know i'm not well, square, well Square is kind of pissing me off. <laughs> All right. Well, well, right now, a lot of people could get anything that's signed merchandise by you, whether yes. it be uh, photographs uh, from clerks. Mostly, mostly photographs. I do have, I do offer some t shirts. Yes. Um, and uh, right now, I currently have some of the authentic Clerks 3 
tote bags that were offered in San Diego Comic Con. I have like a package with that. Um, awesome. So uh, there's there's quite a bit of a savings because I I basically almost everything is on there is signed, and I do have the breakdown. It's like if every if all of this was signed, this is what it would cost, but you're <laughs> getting it for this price. It's over a two hundred dollar value that they're getting for under two hundred dollars. Um, That's but, an amazing uh, value. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I try. I try to be fair, um, and 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 offering something of value, um, and then uh, what else do I have there? Ah, the fire extinguisher. Wasn't there something there? Yes. Uh, although although the fire extinguishers right now, I have, I have them. I have enough for the package deals. Okay. <laughs> All right. There you go. <laughs> um but again you know it's like uh i don't know when this this will be going up um as of tuesday of next week on Ju Ju january january 2nd uh i will not be able to go out and take these packages to the post office because i am having surgery and will not be able to move or get go anywhere for at least three weeks oh. <laughs> all right well you guys will probably be getting this on friday okay so friday is the 30th so it's just before new year's so right. so you guys will be listening to this then so unfortunately you will not be able to get that in time uh yeah i mean unless i get like grab a friend and say hey <laughs> i need you to come over here do this because I, I pretty much have everything you know in a certain way so it's like well it just needs to be put together exactly but, and and have them take it to the post office for me <laughs> well regarding the site you know you know ming chan and ming as we all know is a website guru because that's the reason why he got his job on comic book man let alone in the secret stash that is because... very true so um, you, you should really get him and not threaten him, but be like, <laughs> hey, bro, you, you, you got to create a website for me. I'll pay the dot com per year, but I just need you to manage it. And well, I actually merch. I actually do have a website. I, I do have an actual website. Okay. Uh, but I need to attach the the real domain to uh, uh, Wix, Wix.com. I have to attach okay. that. So that's not an issue. Um, because I can always just put links on there to, for PayPal to, to, to have, to you go know, through. PayPal. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and then get rid of square altogether. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's not so much of an issue. It's just, I, I should get somebody to help me connect Wix with my domain. That's what Ming Chen's for. Yeah. <laughs> get him. You know, yeah, you, know, you got to have some like bad dirt on them. You know, we all do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, I'm like, and it's funny because it's like, I am technically savvy to a degree. Um, sometimes, you know what? Sometimes I'm able to figure things out, but when it gets really nitty gritty, I'm like, ah, yeah. too much. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you'll work it out by the next year. Like after, like in the beginning of the next year, uh, mm -hmm. listeners, we will keep you uh, apprised about what's going on with Marilyn and where she, we, where she can be found and everything else. We'll keep that up in the news. So, uh, you know, obviously we'll leave everything that you can find of Marilyn in our show notes. So check that out. And with that, uh, I just want to thank Marilyn for being on, you know, thank you for this interview. Thank you for having me. No problem. And I look forward to seeing you in uh, the near future, hopefully at a convention. Uh, very well wishes for your surgery and getting well. Because uh, I know it's been a, a hard year for a lot of people, especially you. But you also had the clerks as being something to be happy for. And we're all happy for you for having that, too. And Yeah, thank you. It. It, it's been really nice, um, the feedback that I've been receiving. Um, and, and just even going on the tour and yeah. and feeling it's like i can't even say seeing it's like feeling that excitement of as soon as veronica came on the screen and <laughs> the excitement from everybody in the audience uh that was just touched my heart so much yeah well needless to say this is not your 37th you know interview. i have no idea <laughs> it may be <laughs> hey wait you're saying i'm the 38th 
It may be over that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Well, with that, thank you for being on. This is Panels to Pixels. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody.